the true prophets. First Peter chapter two verse nine it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who have made have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the prophets are a part of a chosen generation. They are a part of a royal priesthood and a holy nation, a peculiar people, special people. See, these are not just random individuals in the world or in, in, in the uh, population of mankind. These are chosen people, a part of a holy nation. You see, and so this is how people get lost on who are the real prophets and who are the true prophets. Now, it also tells you what, what is the job of a prophet. Let's get that. Deuteronomy 28. I mean, Jeremiah 28. Salakia. Jeremiah 28 and 8. It say the prophets that... Oh, you know, I don't want to do it on here. I want everybody to see... It says, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So the prophets, they prophesy against great kingdoms. And they prophesied, meaning they did this in the past. This is a, a well-known a uh, well-known action that the prophets took. This is the assignment that the prophets had from the beginning. It say, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old both prophesied against many countries and against great kingdom. See, the Lord was sending a message to these kingdoms. Because that's one thing that the prophet does. He is a messenger of the Lord. He's sending uh, messages against these countries, against these kingdoms. Messages of war. Messages of evil. Messages of pestilence, okay? And so, who is he using? Who, well, who is this holy nation that he's using to send these messages? Okay, let's go to, let's start off with Amos, because Amos makes it clear. Amos chapter 2 verse 11. It says, And I raised up of your sons for prophets, and of your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, says the Lord? So he raised up the children of Israel. He raised up the children of the prophets to be prophets because the children of Israel was the prophets. Now, um, let's see here. Should I plug that in now? Yes, let's get that while we're talking about children. Let's go to Acts chapter 3. Verse 25. 
it says, Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying unto Adam, And in the, thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. See, ye or you are the children of the prophets and of the covenant. The, the covenant was with the children. And it, it started with Abraham and it ended with Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. After Jacob, they changed, his name was changed into Israel. And that was the end of passing on uh, this blessing down to the seed. The seed stopped with uh, Jacob, which name was changed to Israel. Now let's go back to Amos and see the main part of these messages. How are these messages being uh, sent to these nations? And how are the children of Israel getting these messages? Okay, let's see here. I'm rocking the boat here. Um, back to Amos chapter 3 and 7. It says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, so the children of Israel is the, all the prophets, and he revealed the secrets to them. He revealed the secrets to them so they can give the messages to the nation messages of war and of pestilence and of evil see prophesying against many countries that the Lord is against these great kingdoms see now let's go to Deuteronomy It says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. See, it belongs to the Israelites and their children. Okay, this is this wasn't a um, we are the world situation where the Lord was going to pick out of all nations prophets and he was just going to just pick random men that was righteous and that was obedient. No, he set up a situation where if this was going to be a holy nation, a chosen uh priesthood, a, a royal priesthood, a peculiar special people to reveal his messages to. That's what a priesthood does. When you had the um, 12 tribes of Israel, he only had one nation, one tribe to be the priests, the Levites. And they gave tithes to the Levites. The Levites didn't uh, work in the field and produce crops. Um, he got the Levites to work in the temple and deal with the sacrifices. So this is how he's using the whole 12 tribes. They are going to be the royal priesthood and the prophets. Okay, and like Deuteronomy 29 and 29, it says the secret things belong unto God, 
For those things which are revealed belong unto us and our children forever. The children of the prophets. Now let's go to Tobit. Let's see here, Tobit, chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers, and take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe, for we are the children of the prophets. See, this was a common thing in the nation of Israel. It was a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Okay. Now, once he re revealed things to the prophets, it's an order that he does this in. Now let's get this order in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let's see. Starting at 30. All right. He says, If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. 31. For you may all prophesy one by one. That all may learn. And all may be comforted. Okay, so the subject matter is that things are going to be revealed. When the children of Israel gather together. And assemble themselves together in a holy convocation and sit side by side. Things are going to be revealed, but it says, For ye all may prophesy one by one, take turns. One is going to prophesy, and the other one is going to hold their peace. You see, this is another big one because you got people doing things out of order. 32 goes on to say the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Meaning, we know what the spirits are. See, spirits are not some, some, something inside of your body when, when, when we're talking about these prophets. This is the, the, the words that he's... Let's get that verse because we got people that don't know the scripture. Okay. We're not going off. Nothing but the scriptures. Forget what anybody is saying. They say, it is the spirit that quickens for flesh profit is nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words of the prophets, the prophets are subject to the words of the prophets. That's what that's saying. It's not talking about no spirits inside of somebody. It's talking about the words of the prophets are subject to the prophets because the words in this law, they are spirit. Now, when you look at um, 33, it says, For God is not an author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Verse 34 says, Let your women keep silence, keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted for them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also says the law. So we is no such thing as a woman prophet prophesying, especially in the church. This is where she, if she talking about the prophecy and dealing with the prophecy, this is how she's doing it. Verse 35, it says, one, uh, 
This is in 1 Corinthians 14, 35. It says, And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So if you have a holy convocation, in that which is a church that makes up the church because they're congregating together, coming together, um, just mean a simile of Israelites. So, the women supposed to keep silent because it's order. You don't have no kind of disorder. Um. Okay, that's. I just want to bring that little part out. Now, let's see here. Let's get Isaiah. back up this children thing saying all the children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children so the, all the children of Israel is going to be taught and we're not talking about every single child of Israel but this is talking in broad terms to the Israelites um now let's look at Ezekiel. What is the, the these messages? This is one of the prophets. This is how the the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets because we go to the prophets just like this. Go to the prophet Ezekiel. It said, um. In verse 11, and go and get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, see the children of the prophets, and speak unto them and tell them, thus says the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Okay. It says in verse 17, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. See, in Jeremiah, uh, it was saying that the prophets of old prophesied against kingdoms, countries, of war, evil, and pestilence. Because he told Jeremiah, you're going to be a prophet to the nations. And not so, and when it comes to the Israelites, the, the prophets are a watchman. They are warning the Israelites that danger is coming. Evil is coming. War is coming. Pestilence is coming. See? And you better not be caught being wicked. You see? So the, 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 the prophets got... To tell the nations, that's why Jeremiah spoke that, because he was letting the nations know also that pestilence, war, and evil are, are coming. And he telling his people that they better not be found wicked when the evil come, when the war come, when the pestilence come. Don't be found wicked or being being wicked. Now, um... Let's get 2nd Ezra, because it goes right along with that, 2nd Ezra. Oh, let's see. It says, Behold, speak thou into the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in your mouth, says the Lord, verse 2, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So he says, speak into the ears of my people the words of prophecy, the words of the prophets, because the uh, words of the prophets or the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. Okay, 
now what is these, these words are not gonna be on some peaceful situation because this is how you know even in the the um amongst the children of Israel if a prophet stand up and he's talking about peace this and peace that we know he is not going he is not making himself subject to the prophets he are not uh, he's not um, doing what he's supposed to be doing as a prophet, as a son of Jacob, as a son of Israel. Ezekiel 2 and 9, it say, And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. 10, it say, And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations, and mourning and woe, destruction. So he's foretelling how these uh, English Bibles like to use that word. He was foretelling the future about lamentation, mourning, and woe. And he was supposed to tell the children of Israel, this is what's coming. He's warning them. Lamentations is coming. Mourning is coming. And destruction is coming to the wicked. And you better not be found wicked on that day when this destruction comes for the wicked. Because this is who it was created for. Now, back to um, the nations... Uh, telling the nations that war is coming. Telling the nation that it's not no peace coming. Telling the nations or the so-called heathens um, that evil and pestilence is coming is another job of a prophet. The prophet wasn't just telling uh, the Israelites or just there to warn the Israelites. It was there to be a prophet to the nation. And so this is the thing that a true prophet, the son of Israel, will do. Okay, let's get, um, first we're going to get Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5, verse 1. And verse 1 says the whole thing. He say, then shall the righteous man, who is the righteous man? The prophet stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. See, that's a prophet also will be in slavery because the children of Israel is in slavery, or another word for slavery is captivity. He would be in captivity like Jeremiah was in captivity. Like Isaiah was in captivity. You see? Like Ezekiel was in captivity. The prophets was in captivity. Most of the prophets, and I say most, or I'm going to just say some of the prophets was in captivity. Now, you look at when he say, uh, the, the, then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. Now, a perfect example is Apostle Paul. See, he stood in great boldness, um, like Yahweh shot in the face of the pun uh, uh, Pontius Pilate, telling them about the Messiah or the Amashiach and what he was going to come and do. You see, Yahweh Shah, who they ignorantly called Jesus Christ, he stood up and told them that his kingdom, he was going to come on the clouds with great power and glory. See? And his kingdom was no part of this world. 
See, he stood in great boldness and told the rulers these things, the nations, the heathen. Same thing with the Apostle Paul. They knew what he was doing, um, even though the Jew, the so-called Jews were chasing him down. They knew what he was doing. He was telling the nation. And so to tell these two groups of people what's going on, this is what you have to do. Let me get Sarah. Sarah 39. This is what a prophet should be doing. It say, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. See, he will be occupied in prophecies because this is what a true prophet is going to do. He's going to be occupied in the prophecies that shall be shall come to pass. Like in um what is it? Um Habakkuk chapter two, it talks about the vision. See, he would be occupied in the vision. And and, and when did this vision is gonna speak? Because this is what the prophets always did. They were occupied in prophecy. Now look at uh, Sarek or Ecclesiasticus. Let's see. Let's highlight all of these. It say, let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begot us. Verse 2, the Lord have wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning such as did bear rule in their kingdoms. Men renowned for their power, given counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Now when he say such as did bear rule in their kingdom, that we that's talking about King David. He was a prophet. He prophesied. Uh, King Solomon, he was a prophet. He prophesied. You see, these great men and famous men that was our fathers, see, that's the key. They was our fathers. We was a part of their blood, their bloodline. And so this is the whole whole element of the um, prophets. They prophesied to their people and to the nation and only their nation can prophesy. Only their nation will prophesy because the Lord is not dealing with no other nation. Real quick, let's get Psalms 50. Verse 17, well, verse 16 and 17, it say, But unto the wicked, God said, What has thou to do to declare my statutes? He declaring prophecy. What is the wicked declaring prophecies for? Or that thou shalt take my covenant in thy mouth. 17, seeing thou hast hated instructions and cast my words behind thee. See, they don't believe the prophets. The prophecies. They don't have faith to believe the prophecies and they hate the instruction of the Most High. So only the children of Israel is going to be prophets. See, only they're going to be the true prophets speaking the prophecies of the Most High. Standing in great boldness. Um, in the face of their oppressors. Now, um, I wanted to get Isaiah. Let's see here. 
Joel. Talk about prophecy. <laughs> Talking about oppressors also. It says in 28, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. 29, and also upon thy servants, meaning thy slaves, and upon thy handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Why did I say slaves? Okay, jump over. He tells you that when these prophets come to the prophet, when, when these prophecies is being revealed to the prophets, it will be the children that it will be revealed to. And these children, in verse 6, the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. They would be the children that were sold unto the Grecians in slavery. See? Verse 7, Behold, I will raise them up out of the place where ye have sold them. So they are going to be prophesying about coming out of captivity and putting judgment on the other nations. This is one of the major prophecies. And this is Joel chapter 3 is about the second coming. It says, in verse 8, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Israel, and they shall sell them to the Sabaean, to a people fall, for, for the Lord has spoken it. See, they're gonna they're giving a message that they are the children of the prophets, and they are in captivity, but the Lord is finna reverse the captivity. And like he said in verse 7, and will return your recompense upon your own head. They're prophesying about the return, the payback for them being in captivity. And they are the children of the prophets. That's why in verse 2, it said, your son and your daughter shall prophesy. That's who the Prophecy is going to be revealed to the children of Israel. And they will, 29, they will be servants and handmaids in captivity. Real quick, to understand this servants and handmaids. It says in verse 2, it says, And the people shall take them and bring them into their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord. For servants and handmaids, they're going to possess them. They're going to be their slaves. And they shall take them captives who captive they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. See, the children of Israel was captive. And they, was, they start to prophesy. And tell before or foretell the future that the, their slave masters is going into captivity. See, that's what the prophecy was doing. It was to comfort the children of Israel. Things that are written aforetime is written for your learning. So you may have comfort and hope. You won't lose hope. That you in captivity and it's going to end like that. No. You're coming out of captivity. And the people that have you in captivity. They going to go into captivity. And these prophecies about you having a kingdom. Like your oppressor. That is going to come to pass. That's what the prophets. Was prophesying. And that's what the prophets. Now are prophesying. They're prophesying about anything else. They're false prophets. They're not in captivity, and they call themselves a prophet. They're not from the children of Israel, and they're calling themselves a prophet. They're false prophets. They're not true prophets. The true prophets will be in captivity, telling their captors and their people that they are coming out of captivity, telling their people that they can't be wicked anymore. 
because the morning lamentation, morning and woe is coming. War and evil and pestilence is coming. You better not be found a wicked Israelite and the nations, they're telling the nation that your kingdom and, and your rulership is finna be over with and you're going into captivity. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um from all the precepts I had. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Kakadash, double honors to the elders, pushing the truth, peace of the elect, the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, descendants of slaves scattered around the globe. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.